a lot of critical minerals for this transition and you're going to have certain countries that naturally have an abundance of those. In today, the largest suppliers of oil and gas, the United States, Russia and Saudi Arabia, each produce somewhere between 10 and 20 percent of world supply. If you look at the largest producers of critical minerals, rare earths, lithium, nickel, uh, each of the, the largest producers there each produce more than half of world supply today. So there's a much greater concentration in some of these clean energy technologies and products that we need. Critical minerals, which we're going to need a lot of for the clean energy transition, China has a very dominant position today, not in the mining, but in refining and processing. So they have a critical role in the supply chain. But it's not one based in geologic abundance the way oil is. You can theoretically build refining and processing capability anywhere. So that dominance can be eroded over time with policies to build industrial capability elsewhere. Mining today is concentrated in certain places. Um, more than half of cobalt comes from the Congo. More than half of lithium comes from Australia. More than half of rare earths come from China in that case. Um, copper, uh, lithium, very, Chile, for example, in Latin America has an abundance of. So there's a certain number of countries with a very significant position uh, today. It's very important that we take seriously the amount of energy that is needed for real prosperity and development, not just charging cell phones or turning on light bulbs, but you know, mechanizing agriculture, uh, real industrialization, uh, even a fraction of the amount of energy that we all in the West take for granted. If you were to think about emerging and particularly developing economies, say in Africa, and, 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 and raise the amount of energy used per capita there, these are just enormous numbers. And it is very important that we do that in a way that doesn't exacerbate the climate challenge by deploying lots and lots more hydrocarbons. But it's very hard today to do all of that with renewables alone. And so we need to think about the right timeframes and how this transition unfolds. It should move faster for wealthier countries, probably, than for lower income countries. What matters for climate change is not the annual flow of emissions, it's the cumulative amount of carbon emissions over time. And since the start of the Industrial Revolution, nearly half of cumulative emissions have come from the United States and Europe, that two or three percent from the continent of Africa. So these are parts of the world that does not cause the problem, uh, don't necessarily have the resources to develop their economies in a lower carbon way, because there is often a cost to doing it in a lower carbon way, and don't have the resources to cope with the impacts of climate change. That is the job of government, to deal with so-called externalities like pollution and to put in place, whether it's through a tax mechanism or regulation or mandates, to make sure that investment in clean energy uh, is as profitable or more as investment in hydrocarbons, because today you're able to burn hydrocarbons and dump your waste, so to speak, which is the CO2 emissions, into the atmosphere, usually for free. By rectifying that and with various policy instruments, hopefully we make it uh, try to level the playing field so that companies are able to earn even greater returns in clean energy as they can in hydrocarbon. Mm -hmm.